shoot. Oh good, it is recording. Hey, so today I'm gonna do a review for Caliban's War by James S. A. Quarry, and I was sitting here thinking, I don't have the physical copy of the book with me, and for some reason that bothers me now, but if you look back on my last two videos, I haven't had a physical copy of the book in any of them in a while, and I don't know why today it all of a sudden bothered me that I don't have the book. I just lent it to a friend of mine because she wants to read it. So I gave this book four out of five stars. Before I get into talking about it, um, because this is a direct sequel to Leviathan Wakes, if you haven't read Leviathan Wakes, this is going to have some spoilers in it for it, so if that's a problem for you, Stop this video now, go read Leviathan Wakes if you really want to, and you probably should, and then come back. So as I said before, uh, this is a direct sequel to Leviathan Wakes, which I read sometime last year, I don't remember exactly when. This story takes place like shortly after the first book, and adds a couple new points of view to it, which is really exciting. Or after the first book, Holden's been working for the OPA, uh, Miller's, well, Miller's dead. So this story starts up with an attack on Ganymede like one of the bread baskets of the universe, they grow all the food and stuff there, like it's an important place for making babies, which is weird but like explained in a way that kind of makes sense, even though it's sort of gross that it's like a baby making moon. Yeah. But yeah, Ganymede is attacked by a horrific monster, kind of similar to something we've seen before in the first book, and it destroys the settlement, and because of that things go spiraling out of control as they tend to do in, you know, these situations. So there were three new points of view in this book. Uh, I really appreciated the point of view of Bobby, because I'm, I'm always a fan of these, like, no-nonsense female marine characters, and I just, like, oh, Bobby was so cool with her giant guns and her big old uh, Martian armor thing. I don't... It's, she's not a zombie, I don't know why my hands are doing this, but like with her big armor and just like, she kick ass. She kicks a lot of ass, and it's great. There's a Vassarala, who is a UN... I need to record these videos right after I read the book so I don't forget things, but she's like a UN dignitary or something along those lines, and she's just foul mouthed, which is a, it's a cover to make sure that she gets, like, stuff done. It explains it better in the book, like, you should just read it. And, oh, and Prax. Prax is the third new point of view, and I don't like Prax very much. I find him, I find him to be like, incredibly brash and irritating and like I understand that he's stressed out because his daughter was kidnapped but like dude you need to chill a little bit you he causes so much problems throughout the series he kinda chills out towards the end of it but like leading up into that point he's <sighs> so my batteries just died which is weird because you know it's like a fresh camera overall I don't feel like this book was as strong as the first I I mean, it's good, but it's good in a different way. This one was more political intrigue and back dealings and all sorts of, like, backstabby kind of things, but, like, the first book was so action-packed and, like, guns blazing and space zombie virus vomiting, and it's just, that was cool and exciting, and this book was much slower because it was all political stuff, which I don't mind, but it was such like a jarring switch from one book to the other that I was kind of like, okay, this is cool. When do we get to the spaceship blowing up? And it just, it took, after the initial attack in, attack in the opening part of the book, there is a massive chunk where there's just talking and plot building and character building maybe I don't know there was some weird thing going on between two of the characters that I just it felt really weird and forced like it was unnatural character growth in a way but I just I, I guess it works but it just wasn't for me like when you get to that point you, you'll understand what I'm talking about and if you don't agree if you think it makes friends like, your opinion whatever I'm not gonna tell you what to think it's just I didn't appreciate that weird like sort of shoehorned fight between two characters that was in there, it just kind of felt like unnecessary drama. You know? Yeah? I went off on a tangent, that wasn't what I was supposed to talk about. Stick to your script. It felt more like this book was bridging a gap between books one and three, and I've heard that this story is supposed to be told in like sets of trilogies, so I have a feeling like the third book is gonna be insane because the first book was really good, the second book was slow moving but ended in a way that Ooh, 
And then, so I imagine the third book is gonna hit the ground running or we're just gonna go off crazy with the guns blazing and the spaceship blowing up and the aliens and weird stuff. Well, technically not aliens, but you know, whatever. Ah, ah. On the topic of that ending, I'm not gonna spoil it. I, you can kind of see it coming if you think about it a little bit. You can tell that what's gonna happen is what's gonna happen, but like... Oh, that ending was insane. Like, the last paragraph. Like, the, last, like, the whole last chapter was just... Like, whoa. <laughs> and one of my favorite things of this whole book was when Avasarala called out Holden on all of his, like, oh, crybaby tactics in the first book, where he just constantly sends out, like, these just universe-wide transmissions about everything that's been going on and going wrong and like ends up screwing up more things than he's trying to help and Avasarala just like totally calls him out on it when he's about to do it again in the second book it's like dude learn from your mistakes you've solved nothing in the first book by doing this why would you try it again oh he makes me so mad <laughs> the wrong character died in the first book it should have been Holden and not Miller I mean not that Miller was that great either they're both just kind of awful, flawed human being characters, and I think that's the point of it, but like... Miller's at least flawed in a way that's more entertaining than Holden. Holden just sometimes comes across as that generic sci-fi hero. He's just, ugh, blindly doing the good thing because it's the good thing and to hell with the consequences sort of thing. I really don't like that. But yeah, as I said before, I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads just because it's really dry in the center and I just, I wasn't appreciating as much as the first book. It's still a solid book and I'm really excited to see where the rest of the series is end up going because like this world, this well, the universe it's building really, is interesting and I just, I want to tag along on this journey. So if you've read this series, or if you've read past it, oh, don't spoil anything for me though, please. Um, Leave a comment down below and we'll talk about it. Subscribe to the channel if this is the first video that you're seeing of mine, because it's usually just this, just me ranting and flailing my arms about because I don't know what to do with my hands when I'm recording. Uh, like the video if you liked it, share it with your friends, and I guess I'll see you with the next one. Bye!